we are five. All right, so we have these other this other assignment. Pesticide. So do you need some time to kind of work through this? Or are you done with the pesticide? Yeah, still working? Who needs, who would like more time? Okay, yeah, we'll take, we'll take some few minutes, kind of look through it. Um, on this one, I'll actually show you how to rearrange factors. Um, I don't know how useful, I mean, I know it, it'll be useful. So we'll get that in our notes. Those are just points that are labeled as potential outliers. Uh, but are you doing it, uh, the plot, QQ plot, within each group? Well, this is the thing I was going to ask you about because we were talking about the Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so go back up. So we've got C to U, right? They're all C to U. The okay. numbers indicate what the infection Okay, so. so there's a C, there's one the complement. So there's a section that's just the C to U portion of the infection, and there's another part of the whole thing. Okay, so scroll back up. That's what we start, right? CBU 1751. And then let's okay. scroll down to the, to the okay. It's CBU, and these don't have complements, right? So that label goes in the, those cells. So you want that CBU, or it, yeah, so those are all CBU 1752. So copy it, hit Control C, okay. copy it. Make sure you click off the cell. Now put it on the cell. Copy it. And then highlight all the cells above it. When they do it sequentially, it's probably because you had one and then you went down and Excel has its hard tendency to see the number that determines it. And what you do is control Z to undo. And then you you paste special and just paste the value. And it should force Excel not to add, add all the time. So, so you want these numbers in here, and then as soon as you get the complement, then this switches to, so you'll have a CBU 1752 without complement, and then you'll also have CBU 1752 with a complement, so that'll be the 
yes next to it. Okay. That's 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 what we're looking for. So you're wanting you still want to yeah, and that's where where your yes is where your compliment. Yep. Okay. 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 It's okay to look at it now, but when you did, it'll show it to you later. Oh. There should be a chloro in that room, in that data file. Do we not know what to turn in forward to? Posted looks like that. Yours had length and width. So okay. if you download the leaves, download this leaves here, save link as as that that file should work. I don't know where you where you pulled the the other leaves the length of it. I'm sure I probably had it someplace. So let me let me check. Where'd you get that file? Maybe we made one. Maybe we 
made one? Yeah, once you have, so what was going on was it was trying to take a vector of something that didn't exist. So it was an empty vector. So everything was, once it got down to that binome.test, it was empty. It didn't have any, any data. Any data to look at. Okay, can I have a question with uh, the sign test? Yep. It does the median. Yes. And so like the question, um, there's a lot of difference. Then I got confused with, I said it was um, the other one instead. Me? Uh, no, but the other test, I just went blank. What's the other test? Two test? Yes. Okay, that one is me, and then sign test is me. Yep. And so the examples, like, clarified median so that we would know sign test, but then the one on the quiz was, like, confusing because it just said, is the average the same? So how do we know? Because it said that for the t-test and the sign test. Yeah. So, I'm confused. so we check our assumptions, right? Mm -hmm. So our goal is to test the mean. We check our assumptions for non-normal. And one option is to run the sign test mm -hmm. and test the median is equal to that value. And we just kind of make it make an assumption that the mean and median might be about the same. But we know if we're skewed, they're not. So that led to your 95% confidence question. Yeah. Okay. So we have to remember we have to remember that. So one of our assumptions when we violate the normality assumption, one thing that we and, and we're, we want to use an ANOVA, one of our alternate tests is a Kruskal Wallace test, which tests the median, doesn't test the mean. So our goal is to, is to test the means, but if we switch to use a Kruskal Wallace test because we violated the assumptions, we're not really testing the means anymore. We're testing the median, right. which is different. Have we done that test yet? Not yet. Okay. I, I hope to get there. I hope to get there. I reviewed it, but. Yeah. We should get there. How much homework that we're working on? We can work on it, right? Yes. Okay. You can. Okay. I'll show you how. Okay, because I'm having an issue all. Yep. Yeah. Because yeah. I control what the done to a control that figure. That way I know how to do it. Run done it. But yeah. Having issues with that. All right. Let's go ahead and hit this. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Okay, we're, re we're researching pesticide effectiveness. We have three different pesticides. We want to see if they protect against herbivory. All right. And we have this question, did any of the pesticides work as expected? And if so, which pesticides work? These type of questions kind of get at, well, are we, are we going to compare the pesticides to each other to see which one is best? Or are we only looking to see if they work? So I'm going to start with the first one that says, which one's the best? Do they work and which one's the best? So that's kind of, kind of that, that starting point. So when we ask do they work and which one's the best, we're, we're making sure that yes, pesticides protected the plant and we want to know which pesticide confers the, the most protection. So if we look at, we imported our data, we look at our data, box spots, I see this right now, eh, Maybe not. Maybe I won't find anything because um, all the all the boxes, all of our interquartile ranges seem to capture the medians. Um, you know, maybe there's one. Maybe this A isn't captured by the control. Uh, we look at it. Eh, normality looks pretty good. Equal variance probably looks pretty good, even though these whiskers are a little bit smaller. Um, so we check normality first. And we did these QQ plots. And I think this looks OK. All right, nothing is looks out of the ordinary. They're all basically, cal all points are captured by the envelope with a few exceptions. But again, we can allow some violations because ANOVA is robust. 
uh, against the normality assumption. So I'm going to say we're normally distributed, so we can check our equal variance. Equal variance, get a p-value of 0.132, so looks good. Looks like our variances are equal. So now we want to run our ANOVA, and, and remember I'm saying we should do a, this two-step process. First make our linear model and then generate our ANOVA table, and I get this p-value. So, are the means equal? No, there's a difference. We don't know which ones are different, but we're going to check. So we know there's a difference, so now what we can do is look at two keys HSC because we said, do they work and which one's the best? So we do want to compare pesticides between, you know, among each other. We want to compare the three different pesticides to each other. So we get all pairwise comparisons. We have A versus B, A versus C, A versus the control, B versus C, B versus control, and C versus control. So I get this output, and you can see where we have six comparisons. We could probably piece together and just say uh, which ones are not different, and then say all the other ones are different. Or I looked at the aggregate, or I generated the means here, to get them in order, and then I did started at the, at the bottom to see, okay, let's figure out if there's groups here. So I can see A is different from all of the rest, and then B, C, and the control are no different. So I draw, drew my, my horizontal line, and if we go back to our initial question, do the pesticides work, and uh, which one's the best? I could say, well, it looks like B, C, B and C don't really work. A works, and thus, since A works, A is the best. But as we're going to learn with our adjustment, this is where this two keys HSD test is ensuring that we have a five percent type one error rate. So each test that gets run, it's five percent. But once we start running replicated tests on the exact same data set we're going to slowly increase what, what's called the family-wise error rate. So the collection of tests error rate is going to be higher than 0.05. Two keys controls for that so that the entire set of tests, all of these tests, have a 5% overall error rate. So that's pretty good. But the adjustment is sensitive to how many tests we, we make. So if we compare, if we do six comparisons, we're going to have more of an adjustment than if we have three comparisons. And if we have six comparisons, not only is there more adjustment, but we actually make it harder to reject our hypothesis that there's no difference in our mean. So we did six controls. Could we do better? Could we change our question and say, well, did the pesticides work? We don't care which one's better than, than the rest. We just want to know if they work. Well, if we do that, then we're only concerned with control versus A, control versus B, and control versus C. We're running three tests now, which means we should have a higher chance or more power to detect any difference, any effect. So what test is that? Well, that's done it. That's done it. So this is where I have, what if we didn't want to compare within treatments? That is, we don't care which one's the best, we just want to know, did it work? Did it protect the plant compared to the control? All right, so done it is what we would choose. And it's beneficial because it reduces how many comparisons we actually make. But the catch is that done it doesn't know what the control is. It's not going to read your, your label to figure out CTRL is a control, or as it appears in our text, control is the control, and I'm going to compare for that. The computer's not that smart. What the computer is going to do is to look at all of the levels in your variable. So it's going to look at all of the levels in treatment. It's going to put them in order alphabetically. And whichever one is listed first, it's going to say that one is our control. All right? So just to demonstrate, uh, we're going to put this in here. So this is what Dunnett's test will show. We run uh, 
our test without adjusting our vector. All right. So we're gonna run done its test. I need uh, I need the library. G uh, molt comp. So I know I need that molt comp. And then we're gonna create our linear model. So we already have mod. So I'm gonna do mod dot done it. And we're running a general linear hypothesis test, GLHT, on our mod. And I don't have a mod. That's okay. It's okay. We'll, we'll get it fixed. We're running a general linear hypothesis test on our mod. The hypothesis test that we're doing, we're going to specify the linear function that we're testing. And we're going to run a multiple comparison procedure. And the multiple comparison that we're running is done it, and it's on the treatment variable. Alright, so just remember we look at the model. The model has treatment. That's that's the name of the variable that it used as our independent variable. We're gonna use done it on that treatment. So if you run it, it might work. Maybe it doesn't. I'm gonna I have to create my model. I have to actually load my data set first. Data set. Created my model. Oops, I need library car. Right. All right, there's my mod. Now let's run it. Actually, I'm going to put that on a second. So I don't have to keep doing it. So I ran it. I have mod done it. And to view it, we have to do summary of that model. Oops. Two ticks. Oh. So you know, you can see now that done it reduced the number of comparisons from six to three. Six to three. But you'll notice that we compared A versus B, A versus C, and A versus control. So we've got these two that we that we don't really we're missing control versus B and control versus C. And the reason is it looked at the independent variable that we had treatment. It alphabetized the letters. A was first, and it assumed A was the control. That's not right. So, how do we fix it? Well, we can specify order using the factor function. And here's our format. So, we're going to take a variable that we know we want to refactor. Right, that's in our data frame. And what we're going to do is refactor it and save it back as the same variable. So, we're basically going to overwrite that vector in our data frame. So we got data variable, data variable. They're the exact, those are the exact same. So what we're going to do is factor it, and we're going to specify the levels. Right, we're going to specify the levels. All right, well, what are the levels? So we're going to let's view the levels first. What do you think is going to, how, how do you think we can do that? What function? Exactly, easy. So we're going to do pesticide treatment, and it tells me the level. All right, and it and it puts them in order. Is how R sees it. So R sees it A, B, C, control in that order. So we're going to specify our levels, and the levels we're going to put in the order in which we want them to appear, but we have to use what is exactly in this vector. So we have to list each of these. If we don't, R is going to give us an error. All right. If we add an extra one, R won't give us an error until we try to run some, some tests 
where it says, hey, I'm looking for this other level, but you have nothing in there, so I can't run the test that you want me to run. So we're going to put these in order of control, and then we'll do control A, B, and C. So we're going to view the levels. Now we're going to refactor, placing control first in the list of levels. All right. So I'm going to, we're using pesticide, treatment, down for you. Pesticide treatment. All right, so we're going to factor pesticide treatment. And the levels that we want, it'll be a vector, C, and we want it control. No, there's no capitalization. Then I'm going to say A and B and C. And I have to use quotation marks because that's how R sees it, because they're text. And then I'm going to double check I'm going to double check by running levels. And when I run it, you'll now, you now see that control appears first. Control, and then A, and then B, and then C. So now that we have that, now we're going to run Dunnets again using the refactored vector. And I am just going to copy that and paste it down here because it's the exact same code. Oh, hold on. Uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. That was a mistake. We also need the linear model. It goes back to the linear model. It goes back. Anything that we created, when we created that linear model, it still has the old variables or the old order. They have to rerun everything. So we'll put that up here. And we'll put it in caps. Uh, LM function to recreate the model with the correct order. Asterisk two. So now once we have that, now you can see that we have A versus control, B versus control, C versus the control. And since we've now reduced the number of comparisons that we make, we now see that the only comparison that's not significant is C in the control. So B is actually effective. The reason we didn't detect it with two pieces is because we adjusted our p-values too much. We lost power to detect that difference. So did B work as a pesticide? Yeah, it lowered, it protected the plants a little bit. More than the control, protected it compared to the control. But if we were comparing between within each of the treatments, we lose that, the ability to, do, to detect that. Yep? Miss Miss Bell, I don't know why it didn't. That was weird. That was weird. Yeah. But why did it run instead of being like, this way? <laughs> All right. I'm gonna present. I present this uh, again. We're not. I'm not gonna have donuts on the exam, or I'm not gonna have you do donuts on the exam because of the refactor. But I know some of you are doing research or are hoping to go, planning to go to graduate school in grad school. Uh, where this might be useful. Uh, 
we're going to add another note on here. So like, when would it be useful to do this? Well, if you're running done, it's definitely. But I'm going to go to the other, the other one, uh, up to game Bougia. Good? All right, so I'm going to go back up to that first one that, that we looked at. I'm going to read this in. All right. We've extracted all the female fish. All right, so now what I'm going to do is plot. Push it down here so I can see my, my month. Okay. All right. So I'm going to make a plot of length as a function of month, and I'm going to use this Gambusia email, and we look at this. Look at the ordering of the months: February, January, March, November. It's a little off, especially if we were doing. Like an academic year study where we started in November, we probably want it to appear November, January, February, March, like in that order. Or maybe we want it January, February, March, November. Workaround is just to change how we keyed it in to Excel. So instead of using the actual labels, we use the month numbers. That's one way to fix it. Or we can refactor and say, we will go back to Gambusia. Dot F. Actually, um, we're going to do this up here before we, we extract it. So I'm going to do Gambusia month. We're going to factor Gambusia month. And we're going to say levels will be, I'm going to do November. January, February, and March. November, November, Jan, Feb, and March. Run that. Now when I get the plot, now I get it in the correct order. What's that? Yeah. So I'm going to add up here since, since we had the Gambusia. Um, The end of file four refactor. And there's other ways too. So if you keyed it in as a text or as numbers, so 11, 1, 2, and 3, we can add labels to those. So we can Put in the order and then say the labels that I want it to appear as in, in our figure will be no, November, January, February, March. So it stays as numbers in your data file, but anytime it makes a figure, anytime it reports two keys, HSD, it'll actually give the labels instead. So there's a lot of cool things that we could do, a lot of things to remember that we can do in R, a lot of things that if you're actually going to do this and need help, come talk to me and I'll help you out. So I'm going to go down here. Uh, uh, major benefit refactoring is to make uh, the categorical variables appear in specific orders. For example, if we use month abbreviations, we want them to appear in the proper temporal order. So January, Feb, March, etc. Instead of how alphabetical. All right. So have it in your notes to you go back and you need to do that. This is how we do it. And if you need help, again, come talk to me. So we did game bougie, we did pesticide. Any questions on those? All right. 
So the next part is violating the assumptions. And as I said on Blackboard, in the lecture presentations, I went ahead and uploaded, uploaded this RMD file that has some notes in it already. We're only going, I'm, I think I'm only going to show uh, I'm only going to show a couple things from the presentation, and then we're going to get back to, to, this pres to this RMD file. Because what we want to do is kind of step through and address what happens when we violate the assumptions. What are our options? What's recommended um, yeah, as our options and, and so forth? So you can download it, have it ready to go. Um, we'll go as I, I know. I know we're going to get through this violating the assumptions, uh, and this is on on the final exam. But I don't know how much how much more beyond that we'll have. All right. Questions. Yep, yep, so, um, yeah, I, I mean, we could go another 10 to 20 minutes, but I think what we'll do is, I think we're going to stop. Um, I think we're going to stop because you have the ANOVA quiz that you could take, uh, and that kind of gives you, you're, you're, we're doing this step stuff of the ANOVA. Um, doing those, that process. And then the take home part of the exam goes live at 3, 3 o'clock. So you can start on that. That is due on Wednesday at 1230. So if you, have it, if you have difficulty knitting it to a PDF, you can email me some of the, some of the errors that I know. Uh, I can recognize others. You might have to look at it, and we can do it after you, you finish the exam. All right. And then what is this document for? This one? Yes. This is going to be our notes. Okay. So you see how I've been, like, we've been adding these notes. We've been kind of filling it out with the examples and the practice and, and stuff. So instead of, like, typing it out in class, I've included it. So, like, this oh, okay. first one, the ANOVA review, you know, we, we have, I copied it, basically pasted it from other documents. Okay. So it's already there, and then we ha we do have like blank spots where we'll fill in in, in class during lecture, including the R code and stuff. And then eleven is not <coughs> submitted for homework, right? No, okay. no, because we work through that and kind of use that as practice. All right. Yep. For the A number test, what is the F? That's our test statistic. Okay. Yep. And so. Yes, because it's the probability of getting an F that is equal to or greater than what we observe if the means are equal. That's our definition of repeat that. Yep. So our test statistic is the F. Degrees of freedom is DF1 and DF2. We need both of them. And then we're doing a two-step process. All right. So you can stay if you've already took those those quizzes. Those quizzes are open as a second second attempt, uh, and it gave you more time on that first one. <laughs> that was really bad.